Thank you for giving me the opportunity to uh, say a few words and I'm only sorry I can't be physically present. Soils are the great bit of natural capital which uh, receive perhaps the minimum or the least attention and yet they're amongst the most important. And what I want to do in uh, this presentation is first of all just remind us, uh, although many of you will know it already, just how important soils are. Then I want to ask a question which is what's the problem? What, what is it about soils that uh, leads to uh, a suboptimal outcome, the sort of outcome we have at the moment and some of the de degradation that we've seen? And having identified the problem a third question I want to look at is why doesn't it just get fixed automatically and in particular why don't farmers have the incentive to really look after the soils so yes there's a problem but yes there's a set of people who can solve it and that leads to where the 25 year plan comes in and what kind of changes to incentives to policies to the framework could uh, not just stop the degradation of soils but turn it around and enhance them so that for the next generation they inherit a better set of soils in better condition than the one um, that we have now. So those are my four questions. In some sense the easy bit is the first one and it's the one I'm sure you all uh, know much more about than I do which is why are so soils important? I mean the obvious point to make is that soils are, are the foundation, the bedrock of biodiversity and what happens below your feet in the soils is uh, arguably much more important than what happens above. So without healthy soils we don't have healthy bio biodiversity, we don't have the basic building blocks of ecosystems and hence nature is in trouble. And that's primary. But there are all sorts of other reasons why soils are important and uh, those relate to its productive or their productive potential, the ability to underpin uh, agriculture, food production and therefore the very security of our lives. That counts greatly. And then there are all sorts of other uh, added uh, benefits from uh, looking after our soils. They are massive reservoirs of carbon and their mismanagement is a serious issue uh, for climate change and uh, they are the basis of the above ground biodiversity, the plant life we have uh, and then the insects, the invertebrate, everything that's built upon it. So it's not hard to explain why soils are important. Indeed they are an essential necessary building block for any economy and therefore to think about soils in anything other than as a core part of the economy, our structures, indeed our civilizations, would be a mistake. So they're important, but so are lots of things. And the question is, why is there a problem? Why don't these things just get fixed? Uh, why doesn't nature take care of them? So we have to identify that quite a lot of the things about soils have effects which are much wider than those to the immediate owner of the assets or the manager of the assets. So some of the stuff is contaminated. Contaminated land is a serious problem in itself. It's a waste of land, it's a waste of soils, but it also feeds out into the wider economy. And that's where the problems start. Carbon isn't a pollution problem in terms of climate change to any specific area. It's a problem to the globe. So if a particular treatment of soil leads to the release of carbon, the problem is for all of us and the rest of us. But the actual uh, owner of the farm, it's not that important. Uh, of course the carbon in the soil is a different matter about fertility and about the structure of the soils etc. So carbon's one big ticket but there are plenty of others. So the soils themselves and their erosion uh, get into silting up our rivers, uh, deposits all over the place and all that uh, soil that's come for example off the fens is ended up somewhere else 
on the roads, in the rivers, uh, and we, the rest of us, have to clear up the mess. You just have to go to the Somerset levels and look at the last floods to see the costs to the Environment Agency and to, therefore to us as taxpayers of dredging the rivers to take the silt out of them which has come from running off the fields and in particular in the case of the Somerset levels, uh, maize crops. So we have to deal with the silt that comes off. And then there's the pollutants that come from the way we treat the soils, the nitrates, the pesticides, the herbicides, etc. All of which soak through the soils but go into our water systems. And it's very, very important to bear in mind that it's not just about the rivers themselves and their ecological state, uh, the ditches and so on, but it's also about the groundwater. And recent uh, paper from the Environment Agency indicates that we will go on having deterioration of our groundwater for at least 60 years, even if we stop many of the practices or manage many of the practices of applying fertilizers and chemicals to the soils uh, almost immediately. So there are lots of spin-offs. And then, of course, the damage to the biodiversity, uh, the impacts on other bits of wildlife, and the value of those to all of us, and the nature that we value, the ecosystems we value, and all the supporting functions they carry out. So there are multiple problems for soil. And then the question comes, well, aren't the stewards of the soil the farmers? It's 60-70% of our land area, it's most of our cultivated soils uh, that farmers control. Um, surely they have a deep vested interest in maintaining those assets uh, in perpetuity, to look after them, because after all, without the soils, what is farming? Well, there are two reasons why we cannot rely in the current system and structure and in the current agricultural policy framework on farmers looking after it and why we have to step in and why policy is relevant. The first reason is that farms are businesses. Businesses look at alternative investments and they discount the future. They look for a rate of return. Money now is worth more than money in the future. And a farm is a series of profits over time with the, some depreciation applied to it. So just as we look at uh, um, a car manufacturer and ask, why doesn't a car manufacturer keep their business in perpetuity? Well, the answer is it may not be profitable. They take the profits now, they discount future returns, and therefore, as a fundamental point of business life, the future is less valuable than the present. So they will always move away from what I would describe as a current cost approach, assets in perpetuity, full capital maintenance for what's required. That's the first reason. The second reason is to do with the incentive structure that the common agricultural policy has put in place. So, what does it do? It pays people for farming land. It provides for some agro-environmental schemes. Oh, and then there's cross-compliance, which says that if you want to get the uh, single farm payment, the basic farm payment, uh, then you have to look after the soils. But everyone knows that nobody applies cross-compliance with any seriousness in this country. And the result is that virtually no farmer has seen even the small amount of the subsidy under Pillar 1 that they could lose taken away from them. Virtually nobody. And so it's a good idea to have that in place. We could get on and do something about it, but we don't. And the farmer is not paid for the benefits that looking after the soil brings. And they, as the polluter in many cases, do not face the polluter pays principle. And those two things together, polluter pays uh, uh, and um, the incentive structure around carbon, to which needs to be added a further principle, which is there should be a net environmental gain, because that, after all, is the objective around the 25-year plan. So farmers left to their own devices within the structure of a common agricultural policy and in the absence of an incorporation of farming and farmland into the climate change framework will not 
adequately look after our soils. And that's a fundamental, and you can say, well, it's obvious they're not. That's why we've got the state of soils that we've got today. So then we have to think, okay, what should we do about this? We can't go on like this. It's in the end actually going to destroy farming too. Uh, we've lost a huge amount of the topsoil from the fence, but all over the country, we have quite a lot of damage to the substance of our soils, and we need the next generation to inherit them and the natural environment that depends upon them. Now, a 25-year plan has a section on soils. It recognises the importance of soils, and it has a number of proposals, all of which are helpful, but in total, I don't think anyone would think they add up to a sufficient framework to ensure we really do uh, uh, bequeath better soils to the next generation. So what would we really need to do if we wanted to uh, make more progress? The first thing we'd have to do is protect peat. And if you think about the problems with peat, they are multiple. We have a lot of overgrazing and the incentive structure in the common agricultural policy in the past has encouraged that on our uplands, and that damage will take a long time to reverse. We have the extraction of peat. I mean, it's still, to me, absurd that we don't, we allow gardeners to use peat in their, 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 their many, many gardens across the country. And we use peat a lot in horticulture. This has to gradually, uh, over time, come to a halt. And then we have to restore the peatlands to better shape. And some of that's about, in the lowland peat, cr cover crops, making sure the soils are not exposed, thinking about how to manage uh, the possible uh, um, wind and water runoffs of those, and developing a core strategy for doing that. And we're going to have a peat strategy, but it needs to be really ambitious. We need to do stuff about contaminated land. It's not good enough to have contaminated land all over the place. It's very useful land, by the way, and particularly, by, uh, by the way, for house building, but it needs to be cleaned up. The polluter needs to pay. And where the polluter can no longer be found, then we as a society have to do something about this. The well, third area is the bulk of the soils beyond the peat and beyond the contaminated land. And here there are some obvious wins that we can have pretty quickly. It is pretty absurd to grow maize, which has all the environmental impacts on soil and much else, and use some of that maize, a lot of that maize, in anaerobic digestion to make uh, uh, um, energy, renewable energy. This is ex uh, an extraordinary outcome. And the sooner these kinds of incentive double payment structures, the CAP plus the renewable subsidies, come to an end for this kind of activity, sticking food and using food in process to generate electricity, we'll have a benefit to the soils. But then much more generally, we have to make it a requirement, thinking about public goods for public money, that soil is properly looked after. It is a really big public good. And indeed, you might argue it's the core public good upon which our agriculture and our environments depend. And so we need to get serious in the reform of the common agricultural policy to make sure soils have a core priority. And that hopefully is what's going to gradually happen as we evolve from the common agricultural policy to a British agricultural policy based on the principle of public money for public goods. The proof, however, will be in the pudding, as they say, and uh, we have a long way to go. There's a long transitionary period to 222, and of course, uh, it's always possible that a temporary transition could become permanent. So that's why, for example, the Natural Capital Committee has argued very strongly that there needs to be legislation to entrench the 25-year plan, to really entrench public goods for public money, and therefore, in the context of the soils, make sure that we don't just have a, a series of important initiatives for soil, but we have a comprehensive strategy which delivers better soils for the next generation. It doesn't bear thinking about what happens if we carry on as a present and bequeath worse soils for the next generation. Let's make sure that doesn't happen.
Thank you very much.